OpenAI released really powerful tools, one of which is Responses API, replacing Chat Completions API, powering millions of AI applications, and millions more applications are going to be built with Responses API. So it's vital to learn the basics if you want to build any AI application. And why Responses API is important? The Chat Completions API doesn't support file search or computer use. But this response API supports file search, computer use, soon code interpreter will be available. That's going to simplify the process. File search is for RAG, computer use for controlling your computer and automatically automate repetitive task. Code interpreter is to create the code and run the code. So these all things can be automated. So that is the power of response API. And I'm going to teach you step by step a beginner's tutorial. I'll put all the code in the description below so you are able to follow through. At the end, we'll be creating a chatbot like this where you ask any question and it is able to answer. Also, we'll be able to see how we can track every single interaction using OpenAI platform. This is important so that you can analyze how these AI models are responding and change your question based on that. I'm going to take you through every bit of code, run it and explain it clearly. Let's get started. Before that, I want to tell you about NVIDIA GTC conference happening March 17th to 21st. You have various sessions and you can learn a lot. And here are a few. How to build an agentic AI system. Building future ready AI with agents. AI agents in production. Best practices to implement. How to onboard your team of AI agents and much more. You can even attend that virtually. So I'll put the link in the description for you to sign up. Continuing with Responses API, I want to show you the difference. So chat completions create is the previous way of calling this API and using this you are able to create AI powered application and custom chatbot and this will simplify your process. So using Responses API is very simple. Just replace chat completions with responses and it should work without any errors. So let's do this step by step. In this, we'll see how you can create a basic chatbot, then a chatbot which can analyze image, then a chatbot with pre-built tool such as web search tool, and then create a custom tool, and finally how to stream the response to make it super fast. Starting with basics, a basic chatbot. First, in your terminal, which you can find that from your computer, there pip install OpenAI, GeoPy, and Gradio. OpenAI is the main package, GeoPy is for creating a custom tool and integrating that with the chatbot. Gradio is for user interface. So after running this, just click enter. Now it's installing all the required packages. As a basic requirement, you need Python to be installed in your computer. By default, Mac and Linux machines come with Python. So next we need to generate API key, which you can generate from platform.openai.com. So enter your OpenAI API key like this and then click enter. Next, let's create a file called app.py. So even in your code editor of your choice, you can right click and create a new file app.py and then click enter. Now inside the file from OpenAI, import OpenAI, then client equals OpenAI, then client.responses.create, then providing the model that is GPT-40, that is the brain behind the chatbot. Then we got the input. Write a one sentence bedtime story about a unicorn. A slight difference you see here compared to how it was before. Before it was messages. Now it's called input. So just remember that. So old version chat completions is with messages and the latest responses API is with input. And next, just printing the response. That's it. Just this bit of code and you have successfully created a terminal based chatbot which can answer questions. So this is the question or a task. Now I'm going to run this code. Now coming back to my terminal in the same folder, just going to run python app.py and then click enter. Now here is the unicorn story, which we asked for. Write a one sentence bedtime story about unicorn. Here is the general response. This is for chat completions and this is for responses. And we used output text. That's why we got the answer from here. And you can see that here output text. In platform.openai.com, you should be able to see your logs if you have enabled that in the responses section. So you clearly know the question you asked and the answer you got. So we completed the basic setup. 
now we are going to set up a user interface for this same channel. So I modified the code slightly, just import Gradio as GR, then created a function ask AI and the question, and that goes as a variable, and put the whole code inside this ask AI function. Then I'm pa passing this ask AI function here, fn ask AI. So this is a Gradio dot interface. So literally this one function will create a UI for you, as simple as that. And you are telling, I need an input, I need an output. The input will be passed as the question and we get the output as the response. This is the title for our chatbot and demo.launch. So literally this bit of code and you have created a chatbot with front end user interface. Now I'm going to run this code in your terminal, Python UI.py and then click in. And here is the URL, I'm going to open it. And here is the user interface. I'm going to say, write a movie script about Tom and Jerry and then clicking Summit. And here is the answer. So it's a movie script. The title is Tom and Jerry Chase Through Time and the genre, animated comedy. And here you got the script written by the AI. If you want to fine tune, you should be able to fine tune this. And this is really nice. Now you have successfully created a chatbot with user interface. Next, I'm going to show you how you can analyze images with this response API. I just pressed Control C to cancel the previous user interface. And here is the code for analyzing image. So it's same as before, we are adding input and the content. So we are giving like a formatted JSON. As a user, I'm asking a question, what teams are playing in this image? And again, as a user, I'm, a, I'm providing an input image. That is the image from Wikipedia. So if I open this, here is the image and the AI is going to identify what teams are playing in this image. So I'm going to run this code python image.py, that's where my code is. And here is the answer. The teams playing in the image are Cleveland and Brooklyn. That is really nice. So now you have created a chatbot which has the capability to analyze image. So provide whatever image you want and it should be able to analyze that. Next, let's see how you can create tools or use inbuilt tools. So we got inbuilt tools such as web search tool, file search tool and computer use tool. So web search is for searching web, file search is for searching contents within a file and computer use to control your computer. So the first step I'm going to show you about web search. So just adding tools line here with the type web search preview. That's it. Just this one line and you have added an inbuilt tool. And the question which we are going to ask, give me two AI news story from today in two sentence and then printing the rest. Now I'm going to run this code, python tools.py in your terminal. And here is the answer, searching the internet and giving me the result. That's really nice. And of course you can add UI to this. To use file search, you can upload your custom data or custom PDF to platform.openai.com under storage. They create a vector store. Once after you create, you have an option to upload a file. Click on add files, then you can click upload. And here I'm uploading a file and attach. Now I can use this ID and add the ID here and same as before the tools, the type is file search. Here's the database, that is the vector database. And ask question. So this is literally rag. Rag in just few lines. So we are asking question based on the uploaded PDF or uploaded multiple PDF. So my question is tell me about graph rag. And now I'm going to run this code, python rag.py. And here is the response. It contains multiple things. One thing is that it's agentic rag, which means based on your question, it automatically added multiple queries. This is called query decomposition. Then each of this query is searched against the uploaded data. And you can see it's able to identify the actual file which we uploaded. It retrieves the relevant information. Then it gives the response. What is graph rag? That is really nice. By creating user interface, you should be able to display this data in the UI. I will cover computer use in a completely separate video because it contains multiple lines of code and you can literally automate any of your repetitive tasks or you can just speak to your computer to make those work for you. Up until now we saw about inbuilt tools but now we need to create custom tools. Let's see how we can do that. This is important if you need to create AI agents. So here just a few extra bits which I need to explain. So the way the custom tools work is when we ask a question, give me a weather data, the model or the AI knows there is a tool called get weather and it uses that tool to get the weather and finally it returns the response. So now we are going to show how we can do this in code. 
So first step, we need to create a custom tool. So that is the get weather function. So by just passing the location, it should be automatically able to return the weather. And we are using GeoFi to get the geolocation and open meteor to get the forecast. Then we need to tell AI what this tool is about. That's when we have tool definition. Here we are mentioning it's a get weather tool and we need to provide a location so that it can return the current temperature of a given location. So that's the description. So if we ask to this AI model, give me the weather of a particular location, then it's going to use this tool to get the relevant weather. Then the third step, here we are asking a question, same as before, what is the weather like in Paris today? And that is the question, that's the input. So we are passing that as an input here, and then we are printing the response. So at this time, the model realizes that it needs to find the weather data, and also it knows there's a tool already available. So it's going to call the tool, it's going to mainly return the location, that is Paris. So we are getting the Paris, this will have Paris, and we are passing that Paris to get weather. So get weather Paris, and it'll automatically print the weather here. And we are passing, sending the result back to the AA model together with previous inputs. So second time we are calling the AA model to get the final response. So basically we are calling the AA model two times, one here and one here. First, just the basic question, and it's going to use the tool call. Then the output from the function results is sent back to the model. So the output from the function will look like this, temperature 14. So as a normal user, if there's brackets, colon, it's like more programmatic. It doesn't look natural. So the second response, what it does, it converts the programmatic or the JSON response into a natural language process. That's why we need AI model for the second time. So that's what we've done here. Second time we are calling the AI model with the output that is the JSON output. So overall, six steps, and I'm going to run this. I'll put the code in the description so you can clearly copy and paste it and run it. Python custom tools, and you can see, here is a response from the first time you call the model, and it gives the function to call, that is get weather, and the location, that is Paris, France. And we are running the function get weather and passing the parameter Paris, France to get this result. Then we are passing this result, that is the JSON response, to the model again for the response to, and getting this natural language response, that's it. And finally, how we can make this a fast response? That's when we have stream equals true. So it's same as before, responses.create with the model name, have an input as a user, I'm asking a question or a task to do, write a story with thousand words. Then we are using the for loop to keep on printing as and when the model generates the response. So I'll show you in a bit. So this is all the code. Now I'm going to run this, python stream.py, and you can see the response here. It's slowly getting printed out as and when it gets generated. And that is really nice. Now you can create application with the streaming response to keep your visitor engaged. And I'm really impressed about all these updates. One final extra free bit which I want to show you. If you are using LM Studio, you should be able to clearly use the base URL like this with a fake API key. Let's say model Gemma 3. And you should be able to do this. But this is a work in progress. Probably in the next few weeks, this will work. In this way, you are not using any API key or external source. All this is running locally and privately on your computer. And this is LM Studio, and you can download any models from here locally on your computer. And I'm really excited about this. Do let me know in the comments below what you think about this. Considering you already like these new AI features, I also created another video about Agents SDK, which you can run completely locally on your computer. That is multiple AI agents completing a complex task for free. And I highly recommend for you to watch and I will see you there.